Well, welcome back to the shop and to the channel. Uh, I'm getting back to working on the different components I need for my South Bend Steady Rest. You might recall from the last video, I turned some blanks of the adjusting knobs that were missing off of the steady rest. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it here in the upper right hand corner. In that video, I had mentioned that I was struggling with coming up with the correct or a correct order of machining operations to make these parts. At the end of that video, I showed a drawing for a threaded arbor that I was going to make next in order to machine all of the external features on the knobs. And that's what we're going to tackle today. I have this piece of scrap in the chuck and after we get it reasonably close to running true we will start machining the arbor that looks pretty good by eye i think it's running as true as i need it to be so i can move in the tailstock and we can cut a center hole That center drill seems incredibly dull, so I'm going to remove it and replace it with one that's relatively new. Yeah, that one's cutting a lot better. I don't want to go too deep here with this center. The end piece here is going to end up being machined down to 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. But with the live center in place, I can adjust the gear train so that I can engage the power feed and face this down to or turn this down to a diameter of about one and eight inches, a little bit less. That's a pretty terrible surface finish, but quite frankly, uh, I don't care. This is just going to be an arbor. Uh, I'm not too worried about getting the perfect feeds and speeds. I just need to get this down to an inch and 120 thousandths of an inch. Little ways to go yet.
I should be really close to where I need to be and looks like I'm a little bit over close. I overshot my target by about seven thousandths, but that should be fine. It just means that the blanks will thread on a little bit looser than I was expecting. So I want to mark off uh, the first two inches. I'm going to turn this part here down to about three quarters of an inch. We got roughly about a hundred and ten thousands to go. Do a quick measurement here. It looks like we have seven hundred and seventy two thousandths, and that should be fine. Before I turn down the smallest diameter, I want to get set up and thread the first inch of the largest diameter to 12 TPI. Not a critical dimension in the least, so we'll just use a scale to get about an inch or so and mark a line with the threading insert. And while I have this running now, I'll put a nice lead-in chamfer on the end with the forward edge of the threading insert. I'm going to go ahead and stop the lathe here so I can uh, move the levers in on the quick change gearbox into the correct spot. That'll give me 12 threads per inch. The last time I cut threads on the lathe, I had cut some internal threads. So I had the compound moved over to the left side at 29 and a half degrees. Now that I'm cutting external threads, I need to move this back over to the other side of zero. Here I'm using a one, two, three block to make sure that the tool post is square to the chuck. I want to go ahead and run a scratch pass so I can verify that the gearbox is set up correctly. And that looks good, 12 TPI, so we're ready to start threading.
I am using a new to me tool that I found at a local antique shop. It's a thread micrometer that reads from one to two inch diameter thread pitches. So we're at one inch and 87 and a half thousandths. Little ways to go yet. Take a little bit of a side road here um, to talk about what these are. These are thread pitch micrometers, also known as a screw thread micrometer. And it's very similar to an ordinary micrometer, but this has a special anvil and spindle. The anvil has a V ground into it to fit over the thread, and it's also free to rotate so you can use the micrometer at a range of angles on the thread. And the opposite end spindle has a ground conical shape. And these micrometers, they come in different sizes. Most of these that I have are zero to one inch and they cover a TPI range from 8 to 40 TPI. The two micrometers on the left are for 8 to 13 TPI threads and then I have ones for 14 to 20, 22 to 30, and then this one here is 32 to 40 TPI. If you know of where I could get some standards for these, leave a comment. The micrometer on the end is uh, for 8 to 13 TPI, but it is a 1 to 2 inch micrometer. It's the only one I have in 1 to 2 inch, and it's perfect for measuring the thread pitch on our arbor. If I take a look at either the engineer's notebook or the machinery's handbook, for what the thread pitch of a 1 and 1 8 12 TPI screw thread is. It says it should be 1 inch 70 thousandths and 9 tenths. So if I grab one of the adjustment sleeves from the steady rest, I can use this micrometer to measure what the pitch diameter is. So it might be hard to read this on camera, but this came out to a pitch diameter of 1 inch and 65 thousandths, which all that really means it's going to be a looser fit. So in this scenario, that's acceptable. Take another quick pitch measurement of the thread. It looks like we're at 1 inch and 78 thousandths. So we're getting close. So I'm only going to move in a thousandth of an inch at a time. And I'm going to start checking it with a 1 and 1 8 12 nut that I have that I know fits over the adjustment sleeves. It's still a little bit snug, so we'll cut a little bit deeper.
that's a perfect fit so we're done cutting threads and we can move on to the next step Well, the last thing I need to do here is I want to turn down the smallest diameter to 7 16ths of an inch so it'll be a very nice slip fit into the end of the knob blank leaving about a half of an inch of the middle size diameter. stop the lathe and check the insert because that sounded horrible and sure enough there was a big old chip out of the tip of that thing and I think that insert was pretty new so I rotated it got a fresh corner and we'll finish turning this part a quick measurement here we're at 493 and 5 tenths um, shooting for 437 and 5 tenths, 438 should be around the right number. Oh, are you kidding me? I went too far. Well, I misread something. I'm not sure what, but I'm probably about two thousandths under. I guess that'll be okay. Everything else has been off on dimension so far, so why not this piece? It fits, and that's the most important part. It'll be on there nice and sturdy, and it gives me access to the entire exterior to machine all of the outside features on the knob. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. It's kind of hot in the shop this week, so I'm going to take a break and go back inside. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.